Hello everybody, my name is Megan and welcome to an unhaul. So, 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 I unhauled a chunk of books and then my brother picked through them and, and took away the ones he thought were prettiest and he was most interested in. So this is not all of the books I've unhauled from my shelves recently, it's just what's left after my brother rifled his way through. And some of them, like, I'm gonna go through them now and be like, should I keep this? And I'll be sad to see it go, but really don't have any space on my shelves and it's it's time. It's time, it's time for me to let go. So I'll just dive right in. I'm not really gonna give you the plots of what the books are about. I'll just give you sort of a brief reason why I'm gonna say goodbye and then yeah, move on, wrap up. Okay, so book number one, we have A Place Called Perfect by Helena Duggan. This is a middle grade and I, it's what I've tried to read. I, I, didn't, I didn't get hooked. So I just, I'm not the biggest fan of middle grades and I'm only gonna pick up ones I'm really interested in. Next, um, we have Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and What If It's Us, so Becky Albertelli and Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera. I've read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and I really enjoyed it. I just don't see myself rereading it and I'm going to give this to my cousin, uh, my younger cousin, and like she's going to get more out of it than I would rereading. Um, and What If It's Us, I've just lost interest in, which I'm sad about, but again, it's going to go to my cousin. She's probably going to have a better time. Next, we have Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lena Taylor, which is one of my favourite series. She's one of my favourite authors. I just, I have multiple copies of this book and I don't need the UK paperback when I'm not going to buy the paperbacks for the next two in the series. And then we have Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which is a YA fantasy. It came out a while ago and I would have to reread it in order to read the sequel. And I'm sort of moving a little bit away from YA fantasy. I don't really want to go back and reread it, but again, my cousin is going to have a look through these. I'm hoping that I can move into to read this one because I feel like she would really enjoy it. We have Gideon Smith and the Mechanical Girl by David Barnett. I tried to read this. I've tried to read this several times and just never sort of gotten on with the steampunk, there we go, the steampunk aesthetic of it. And it um, never really gelled with the writing. So hopefully this goes to a better home. Codename Verity by Elizabeth Ween. This is um, like a World War II retelling. And again, I bought it when I really thought I, I liked historical fiction and just it didn't hook me when I've tried to read it like the five or six times I've tried to read it. So my library has it on audio. So if I do um, feel the need to pick it up, I'll grab it from there. Passenger and Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. This is a duology that I, I did enjoy when I read it. I just don't see myself picking it up again. So it's pretty junky. There's no need for it to be sat on my shelves. If I Stay by Gail Foreman. I enjoyed this when I read it, but it was a long time ago. I didn't really enjoy the movie and I don't see myself picking up this book again. Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I keep going back and forth on this one because I did actually really enjoy this and I think if I reread it, I'd really like it, but I don't know. It's a YA contemporary and I just don't know if I want to reread it. This is sort of a maybe. This one, if it stays in my room any longer, I could end up keeping. Angelology by Danielle Trusan. <sighs> I've this book for years. I have no idea what it's about and I've never had any inkling to pick it up. Catch Up Clouds and My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece by Annabelle Pitcher. These are both on the very young end of young adult and deal with sort of more difficult issues. They sort of had stencil edges before stencil edges were cool, but they're not what I'm gravitating towards anymore. Gravitating towards anymore and so yeah. And then we have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I am to know about this one as well. This was a favourite back in the day, but I think if I reread it, I would not like it. And so rather than tar the experience by rereading it, I'm just gonna say I enjoyed it in its time, it had its moment, and now I'm moving on. We have Viper by Bex Hogan, which is study. It came in a fairy loot box as an extra book a really long time ago, and I've just never gotten to it, and I don't see myself getting to it. The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr was a gift, um, so thanks Rebecca for, for the birthday present. Uh, sorry, I'm getting rid of it. Um, I've tried to read this several times, and the mysteries just never intrigued me. Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. It just looks like the kind of YA contemporary that I'm not as interested in. And I've had it on my shelf for years and never, never gravitated towards it. Science Point to Yes by Sandy Hall. I must have kept her other book because it's not in this pile. A Little Something Different. Okay, so A Little Something Different I read and I really enjoyed it and Science Point to Yes was sort of disappointing compared to it. It has got a really cute cover but that's not enough for me to keep hold of it. The Guardian by Nicholas Sparks. I went through a Nicholas Sparks phase when I was younger and like I still love a walk to remember and message in a bottle. Like a mess. But I just, I don't think I need to be reading any more Nicholas Sparks. And then finally, another Gail Foreman, um, where she went, the sequel to If I Stay. Um, this sort of ruined If I Stay for me a little bit. I didn't think it was a very good sequel. Um, and so it's, it's going. Have They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I gave this book five stars when I first read it. And then thinking back on it, it it's not signed. I'm sure it's like, yeah, it's a signed edition. 
and I got the American hardback like it's prettier but I just no I don't I don't really want it we have woven in moonlight which came in a fairy loot box and sat got the stickers that match it stuck in there it's been sat on my shelf for forever and I just have absolutely no inclination to pick it up Fair and fan parts by Sarah Maria Griffin. I was really intrigued by this one, like how cool is this cover? But yeah, I think I got like 60, 70 pages in once and just did not grip me at all. I don't remember a single thing about it. So unfortunately, this one is also going. I have Wicked As You Wish, which is another Imp Fairy Loot book that we got as an extra. It was an art. I did read this and I did enjoy it. I just kind of want to buy a normal edition um, probably after the sequel comes out so I can make sure it matches. Grace and Fury, a fairy loot book which I read and it was fine but I don't have any interest in picking up the sequel and there's nothing particularly special about this edition for me to hold on to it. And then These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan which I've read and I enjoyed it, I gave it four stars but I have the US hardcover that I prefer the cover of and I wasn't able to get matching um, editions from fairy loot for the sequel so there's no reason for me to keep hold of this. And yeah that's all of the ones that are still in my possession that I haven't gotten rid of. There were a couple more fairy loot books for sure that my brother took that I got rid of and other things here and there but I don't remember what they are. So yeah that's all the books that I will be getting rid of unless I decide to change my mind and just keep hold of just one day but I have no idea how many that is I'll, I'll pop a number here I'll count them up later but yeah if you have any questions about any of the books shoot me a message I'm happy to <laughs> happy to talk to you. Leave me a comment, add me on social media, chat to me, everything is in the description below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!